Hi. I'm a little nervous, so you, we all have to bear with me, all right? I'm sorry. <laughs> there are two types of people in this world. People who criticize and people who get criticized. When you're in a group, there's always that one person who thinks differently than the rest. When you give out an idea, the group will most likely not think it's a good idea, just at the fact that it's different and weird. I'm that person. To myself and others, I am also known as a weird person. And I thought about it lately. What if being weird isn't actually weird? Just because one person thinks differently than the rest doesn't mean they're wrong. It's just simply different and unique, and the idea should be shared with everyone. But since that idea is different, people think it's wrong. A projection bias is basically what it is. A projection bias is when you're trapped in your mind all the time, basically 24-7. You assume we all think the same and agree on everything. The bias also overestimates how normal we are as well. But if you think differently than others, then you're not part of the projection bias. You're actually the opposite, which is introjection. Introjection simply means you do think for yourself. A person who is not part of the norm has a different mindset than others. I've come across this all the time in group activities. You can have the most amazing idea and think it's the greatest thing you've come up with, but once you share it with your group, they either love it or hate it. If people in your group like it, they clearly have the same mindset as you or just open to new ideas. But if they don't, then they just have a different way of thinking things and are more narrow-minded. Typically, if they think it's weird, it's clearly something you're not used to see every day, and it's something new. It's sort of like a view of society. We as humans have had a routine since the day we were born. And when something new steps into our routine, we just don't like it. Just like how an unusual idea is brought up, and if it's something different, they won't like it as well. Have you ever seen the people who are most successful in today's society? They're the most weird, creative, original, and out of the ordinary type of people. Take Steve Jobs, for example. Did you know that he actually wanted to become a Buddhist monk before creating the Apple company? I don't think we ever expected that. Even look at Beethoven. He composed his most beautiful works of music in the bathtub. Thomas Edison had a maximum of three hours of sleep a day when he was creating a new invention. And out of all things, we wouldn't expect this. Francis Bacon, an artist, stated that his hangovers helped him be more creative in his works of paintings. Harvard psychologist Shelley Carson stated, eccentric people tend to be more creative because of something called cognitive disambition. Basically, creative folks have less of a filter on their thoughts and actions, which makes them more likely to do things that don't follow the norms of behavior. The people who are different from the rest are the perfect definition of an outlier. An outlier is someone who stands apart from the others of his or her group by deferring actions, beliefs, and religious practices. For example, a flock of sheep. A flock is always together, and there's always that one sheep who is isolated from the rest. In society, the people who are considered normal are in that flock of sheep, and the people who are weird are that isolated sheep, just like our pal right here. In a book I read called Ungifted, Intelligence Redefined by Scott Barry Kaufman, he talked about hypomania. Hypomania consists of racing thoughts, distractibility, decreased sleep, increased goal-oriented behavior, and high self-esteem and risk-taking. As a child, you were hyperactive, had ADHD, and was very creative. Having a person personality trait of hypomania is also considered a bipolar factor as well. But usually, people who do have hypomania end up not being addicted to drugs, alcohol, or any other drug substance. And most people who do have it are very successful people today. When I was little, I was all that. All throughout my life, I was known as the weird kid in school. Not many people accepted that about me, but my friends and family did. And by doing that, that made me more comfortable with who I am. It's great to have those people who do love me, except the part about me, except especially my mother. She, she would always laugh along to all the stupid things I did when I was younger. And by her doing that, that made me really comfortable with who I am. She didn't punish me for who I am, like being hyperactive and a bit annoying sometimes. But there is other people, other parents out there though that do punish and bring down their child for being different. And by doing that, that makes them, makes them less confident in them. But having this personality trait is great because you don't let people bring you down. When someone says something negative to you, you just simply let it go. And if you're taught that at a young age, that's great. Ugh. To this day, people wouldn't even think I'd be able to give this speech but I didn't let that affect me at all. I have enough confidence in myself to believe I can achieve anything, and I did. 
I'm not trying to sound conceited, but I'm a great example of hypomania. And I'm here to inform people that being weird isn't bad at all. If anything, it's a privilege and you should embrace it. Usually someone who is hypomania can develop a state of mind called apophenia. Apophenia is being open-minded and that's supported by the dopamine. And by that, a lot of people have pareidolia. Pareidolia is a psychological phenomenon involving a vague and random stimulus, often an image or a sound, by being perceived as significant. For example, seeing Jesus on the burnt toast or the face of a man on the moon. Also, you can hear hidden messages on records being played backwards. Scott Barry Kaufman stated in his book, with too strong of a focus on the structure of reality, you miss out on the hidden connections. A person who's open-minded gets to look beyond the horizon, while other people who are more narrow-minded don't get to embrace what's around them. We need to redefine reality on our views of people who are weird. Tonight, I'm trying to reach out to all of you that being weird isn't bad, in fact, it's good. We shouldn't be looking down on the people who have the ability to see beyond expectations. We should look at them as equal like any other person who's part of the norm. Thank you.